All right, I'm going to work two problems using the Arrhenius equation. And the Arrhenius equation uh, comes in a couple different forms, but the form that's most useful is right here. And basically what the Arrhenius equation tells you is, or shows you, the relationship between the rate constant K and temperature. Um, activation energy is also in there. So given two out of these three variables, you can solve for the other one. So as you can see, the way it's written now, it's written like this: the uh, formula for a line, which, of course, is y equals mx plus b. So then if we make a plot where y is the natural log of k and x is 1 over t, then the slope of this line would be minus activation energy divided by R, which is the gas constant. Okay, And if we rearrange this equation for slope, then you can solve for activation energy. Um, the form of the gas constant that you want to use is this one, um, because of course deciding what correct gas constant to use depends on the units and in this case we're talking about energy so we want joules in there and so now the two problems I'm going to work are from the back of chapter 13 in your textbook um, there is let's see problem number 13.60 and problem 13.62 so problem 13.60 in the back of your book um, talks about a chemical reaction and said data was gathered concerning the temperature in Calvin and the rate constant for this reaction and it asks for the activation energy. Well the first thing to realize is anytime they ask for activation energy you need to think about Arrhenius equation. And so I'll rewrite the Arrhenius equation here again so that you can kind of figure out in your mind what you need to do to figure out activation energy. Okay, So what you need to do to find activation energy is you need to make a plot of the natural log of the rate constant versus 1 over t and then you need to find the slope of that plot which will be negative of the activation energy over the gas constant. So the right way to do this would be either to graph the correct uh, x and y factors here. Um, and if you don't know how to do that on your calculator, that's something you really should learn how to do because you're going to need to do it in calculus and in later science courses. So, But if you don't do that, I'll show you kind of a shortcut cheaty method to do it. But in any case, in order to work this problem, you do need, in fact, to find, since you're graphing natural log of k, you need to find the natural log of the k, and you need to find 1 over t. So before we do anything else, we're going to do that. But my kind of cheaty method is, you know slope is the change in y over change in x, so I'm just going to pick two data points. It's usually not very reliable to do that, but I'm going to do that just to show you how we work this equation. And I'm going to take the change in the y values versus over the change in the x values and use that as the slope. All right, so I made a little table here, and what I did is I chose the first and last experiments in the data table. So that would be 800 Kelvin and 925 Kelvin, and then I chose the corresponding rate constant values that go along with them. And then I, of course, what I really need is not temperature. I need 1 over temperature for my graph and the natural log of K. So I took both of these values and converted them into the ones I need for my graph. And then, of course, slope is change in y over change in x. And y in this graph is natural log of k. And x in this graph is 1 over temperature. And so the slope 
that I calculate from these two data points, which again is not normally a reliable way to calculate slope, but it's a quick way. So, let's see, 8.217 minus negative 5.594, that's the change in value for natural log of k, over the change in value for 1 over t, which is 0 0.00125 minus 0 0.00. 108. And when I punch all that into my calculator, I get minus 2.623 divided by 0 0.00017, and that equals 15,429. I'm not done though because the slope is not exactly equal to activation energy, we have to do one more calculation. So slope, if you remember the Arrhenius equation, is equal to negative activation energy divided by the gas constant. And the gas constant that we want to use when there's energy involved is 8.314. And so if we rearrange that equation to solve for activation, whoops, and that slope is negative too, the negatives are going to cancel. So if we rearrange this to solve for activation energy, it's minus 15,429 times the gas constant, 8.314. And activation energy then equals about 128,000 joules. Um, the problem asks for it in kilojoules, so that's 128 kilojoules. That's it. So in an attempt to just kind of clarify using the Arrhenius equation, um, how can you tell if a problem requires use of the Arrhenius equation? Well, the bottom line is if it asks for activation energy, you're going to need it. Um, and typically, it'll give two different temperature values. Remember, temperature has to be in Kelvin, and it'll give two different values for rate constant K. Okay. Um, and you can either then calculate activation energy by using the slope shown right here like we did in the last problem. So that would be the difference in the two natural log of k values and over the difference in the two values for 1 over temperature. Um, or you can use this handy dandy derivation of the equation and basically if you put two of the Arrhenius equations again together you can derive and get this. Obviously, I don't expect you to derive it, but I think this equation is easier to use. So the next problem, I'm going to use this version so that you have experience with both of them. So this problem is 13.62 in the end of the chapter in your textbook. And this problem asks for the activation energy for a reaction where the rate constant is tripled when the temperature goes from 600 Kelvin to 610 Kelvin. So, so plugging into the combined formula at the top of the page, we would want the natural log of 1 over 3, okay, because we're saying that K1 is slower and that K2 is 3 times higher equals minus the activation energy. The R value is 8.314. And let's see. Notice that K1 is on top over here and T1 is the first one. So first and first. So you don't get the two mixed up. So T1 is 600 Kelvin. And T2 is 610 Kelvin. So let's do some simplifying. Let's see, the natural log of one-third is minus 1.099 and 1 over 600 is 0.001667. I'm going to carry too many sig figs for now until the end. And 1 over 610, okay, and Simplifying further then, 
see. 0, 0.099 equals, I might have forgotten the minus sign on the last page. And when we combine those two inverse temperature terms, we get, what do we get? A very small number is what we get. There we go. All right, so now we have to just simplify this algebraically. So we need to multiply both sides by 8.13, 4. and divide both sides by our teeny tiny number. Okay, and that will give us activation energy. There's negatives on both sides, so those are going to cancel. And when you combine all these terms, you get that the activation energy equals around 330,000 joules and the problem usually does ask for it in kilojoules. And that's that. So you can pick your method to solve.